Right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Comedy Pinata. I'm coming to you from New York City. This is our first New York episode. Whoa. I thought, yeah. what better way to do it? Norman it's at Azanias and Nationals. But I got Mark Norman, Sam Morell, and Joe Gatto joining me today. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for coming on board. Comedy Pinata. Thank you. Good to be in New York with all the diverse faces out here, you know? <laughs> now, you guys were just you were just raving about Burr's special. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Killer. Yeah. Great. And, and I assume one of your favorites, obviously. Sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. Beyond. <laughs> yeah. You really saw him, Mark. Well, no, I mean, I thought it's a given. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best working. I mean, there's 8 million comics now and uh, 9 million suck. So uh, <laughs> it's nice to have uh, this, this guy who's still pumping out real comedy. It's hard to stay at top of your game for, you know, two specials. He's done it right. for, like, what, seven or something? You know, yeah, it's crazy. Good point. So. I mean, I remember it was half hour on HBO, you know, and I still remember bits from that, like the the joke about, uh, you know, why would I want to sleep in on a Sunday when we can spend $18 oh, on eggs? On eggs. Exactly. Exactly. I, can listen, I can listen to your friend say, is that pesto? <laughs> I still remember so that good. bit. Yeah. Oh, it's asparagus. <laughs> same, the one that, I think that's that same special where he goes up to Harlem to meet a girl and he's like, oh. I don't know where, I'm on Danny Glover Boulevard. <laughs> and we're like, oh, that's brilliant. Well, that's from what, like 15 years ago? Maybe, yeah, if, if probably that. More. Probably more. I remember I, he came to my college when I was like 19 and I got to open for him. They let oh, me open. Wow. And yeah, because I was they were doing like, stand up at, at, I was like college. a year in. I sucked. That's and awesome. he was so nice. Yeah. I, you know, I was terrified because I, I respected him so much even back then. Yeah. But I remember. Uh, yeah, it was when that Yankee, I forgot, you remember the player who flew the helicopter into the, into Midtown? <laughs> forgot no. the guy's name. Well, anyway, he, he mentioned, Kobe? he brought it up, he brought, uh, it, he brought, <laughs> well, he brought it up to me, and I was like, oh, but you're a Red Sox fan, right? And and he goes, I'm not that big a Red Sox fan. <laughs> we used to, uh, we used to go to Yankee games together. When, when we, you know, we were, you're just young comics, you're killing time, so we went to Yankee game. This is like, this is, this is Burr. This is Burr. He's the same way on stage as he is off. Some dude catches a foul ball, mm -hmm. right? Catches a foul ball, and there's a kid that was going for it too, right? So the whole section's give it to the kid, give it to the kid, give the ball to the kid. And so the guy's not giving the ball to the kid, and, and eventually it starts swelling, and these people are heckling this guy. He finally stands up, makes a ceremony out of it, and hands the ball to the kid, and the whole section claps. Not Burr. <laughs> goes, you caved. You caved. Hey, smoke this. Everybody else is smoking it. And now Burr is doing st like doing crowd work in section 218. Wow. Of and he's got the whole section laughing. He's burying this guy. It was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Wow. At Yankee Stadium getting laughs. Even in that moment, he can find the cool, funny new angle. Yeah. You know, that's an original take. Yeah. You caved. No one else went that way, but he did. You know what's Teaching this kid that he's just gonna get handouts in life, ruining that kid's future. Yeah. Like, it's like, but give it to me, everybody's saying it. Yeah. And that kid was Donald Trump Jr. Yeah. No, barely got it out. But yeah, it's funny. I, I was thinking about like comics when you see them in the wild. And I remember <laughs> when we did- <laughs> well, I did the Joker's Cruise, I remember, yeah. and, we're at, and we're stranded, New Orleans, at the airport, yeah. miserable. I'm yeah. with Rich Voss. It's just me and Voss <laughs> at the airport. Yeah. And Voss, first off, my flight's delayed like seven hours. His delayed like 45 minutes. Yeah. He's complaining the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here all day, dude. I'm hungover. Yeah. And then some guy, Voss, oh, some guy overhears Voss complaining, and the guy says something rude to him. Voss just turns, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Starts insulting this guy for like 10 minutes ah. straight. A crowd forms around him. And and this guy's probably like, who is this 60 year old man ah. in a pinky ring and a fedora ah. calling me ugly? Like this is the weirdest, I was dying. Oh, damn. <laughs> Boss is great. Oh God, who was it? It was, um, who was the last comic to recently pass? Louis Anderson, Norm, Saget. It might've been, I think it was, I think Saget had just passed that day. Gilbert. And we're doing, yeah. we're doing a, uh, Millhouse's show at Gotham. Oh, Comedy Juice. Voss goes up on stage. He's like, he's like, yeah, it's good to be here. I, I, you guys see, uh, you guys see Bob Saget? I'm supposed to meet him here. And I was like, oh, oh dude, man. right already? Yeah. I love it. Like, I love that. <laughs> wow. And he had another uh, follow-up line, and it was just like the whole crowd is cringing, and all, all the comics, of course, are dying in the back. Sure. Doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, there's this weird line with comics where we like we like that dark shit, but it's Sometimes comics will even push it that, where yeah. other comics are like, whoa, I didn't know you were going there, yeah. you know, but it's kind of fun. I saw somebody throw a ketchup bottle at, at Voss. 
Did he catch it? <laughs> no, like a sensei. <laughs> Give it to the kid. Give the bottle to the kid. <laughs> you came. <laughs> but you were one of the first comics uh, to, because to, I had I, reached out to you about uh, going out on YouTube that, that I saw like truly was like impactful. Uh -huh. You were one of the first. And now, now like everybody's doing it. It seems like, yeah. yes. And even Burr, I was talking to him before this Netflix one. He's like, He's like, I think I'll do that. I, really? I think, I think he was, the, look, it's hard to turn away from the money, but he's he could also make it back. Yeah. He's one of the few that could really That's do true. it. That's well, true. He did it before me, but it's true. Like, I'll, I watch YouTube now, like it's TV, and I yeah. see all these comics I've never heard of, and they're like a year in, and they got a special out on YouTube. And I'm like, how about that? But that is the problem, too, is the oversaturation and, yeah. and the fact that, like, a year in comic can be like, I'm ready. There was right. something good. I mean, I'm not defending gatekeepers because fuck them. But at the same time, like there is something to be said about having to submit and making yeah, sure yeah. it's cr you're crushing. And I don't know, like I, I waited like 10 years to put my first album out, I think. Same. You yeah. know, Same. so I mean, I, I do think like, I get it. You want to you want to get a, a thing going already, but this lives forever. So yeah, like during the pandemic, your rooftop special, I thought, wow, that is so fucking cool that you took the onus upon yourself and then did it and, and aesthetically like it looked great too yeah it looks that's like it matt salacuse awesome, yeah. and, and dominic mole like they brought drone cams to a roof and i was like this is the dumbest shit <laughs> i've ever seen like i was like oh, it was you were, you, and then and then you see the yeah i had to address like, it it's like a loud i was like doing i'm in the middle of a bit and it's like <laughs> yeah i had to i had to mention it every time it would go up you know right, but yeah. uh, it looked, it though, looked right? awesome yeah yeah and then do you eat crow and like all right, sorry, you were right. It was. It looked great. No, I know. I knew yeah. it would look great. It was just, you know, I. <laughs> yeah. It's it's yeah. it's hard to kill on a roof. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm already like Easier you're killing. Yeah. <laughs> Tell that to Clapton. But but yeah. All right, you see, I like the dark stuff. But all right. <laughs> I was supposed to meet his baby here today. Did something happen? <laughs> You know, uh, <laughs> there's something about the roof that where you like, okay, it, the laughter's already shitty because there's no yeah. walls or ceiling. It, I'm rusty as hell because it's mm -hmm. the pandemic. So I'm doing the roofs every night, but it's not like I'm doing, it, it's just, de it's hard to tell which joke is killer. So I look at a few of those jokes. And I'm like, yeah, I probably want to put them in a regular special, but that was like a special pandemic thing. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so unique. But at the time, I remember when it came out, like that was all the comics were talking about. It was like, oh my God, that was so cool that you took it upon yourself and released it. And I think that's again, one of the great things about where we're at now, it's a double-edged sword for sure. Sure, sure. You got a lot of. I've only seen this. I've only seen this special from the production side. I've never. That's got to be nerve-wracking to, like, hearing you guys talk about it. I mean, I'd imagine that I would be super like protective of like you're, you want you know you've told these jokes over and over and over again, and as soon as you say one. If it's not the best you've ever said, are you me like, ah, oh, shit? Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah because too. you've done them all. Like I've seen you work a lot of your stuff when we're on the road together, and yeah. it's like just sometimes like they just you want that to be the best time you've ever told it. Of course, so I would yeah. say it'd be just be full of regret. It's gotta be. There's that too. There's, yeah, it's right? a gamble. It's definitely a gamble. You just you hone it. You gotta hate the material before you make a special. You gotta yeah. like, I just want to put this down and yeah. start fresh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that's, this one, we're, I, I'm, I'm about to do one um, for Amazon. Joe's directing it, but I, I hate it now because it's been five years. Yeah. But Wow. But it was like everybody could What is this, boyhood? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I said, what is this, boyhood? <laughs> <laughs> but I was just. It's I, a great I title. <laughs> in the concept so much, but it, it, it took a while to sell because it's different. Like the, the concept is basically it's a talk show, but I'm the only one on the talk show. Mm. So talk shows are 20 minutes of kind of like one-liners, and then you have 20 minutes of panel, which is storytelling. Mm. Basically, you know, you guys know when you do it, they're like, can you tell us a story? And then right. the last 20 minutes is traditional stand-up uh, by the band. You should so call it like, three mics. <laughs> 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 well, Kevin Brennan's going to sell merch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I still think that that's hilarious that he, he sells merch that says... Neil Brennan has AIDS. <laughs> is that right? Is that oh, what it geez. is? Wow. Damn. That's so crazy. If bro. I was Neil, I'd be like, great, get my name out there. That's something. <laughs> That's exposure. No bad publicity. <laughs> but, yeah. but a lot of these young cats, and not to sound like old man Norman, I mean, you've been doing comedy 48 years, but, <laughs> you know, 
anonymity is your friend. But when you're new, you're just like, I got to get out there. I need some yeah, attention. Yeah. I need something you're craving because you feel so lonely and lost. And it's this big sea of people who don't know you. So you want to put something out because a lot of comics just want the glory. You can see, like, I'm doing my album. Now I'm having the album release party. Sure, yeah. Now it's on vinyl or whatever. And you're like, but it stinks. Yeah. Yeah, what wait. about that part? Wait. wait. No rush. Especially people that are like a year in, like filming their sets and then put, I'm like, don't put it out there. Don't wait. Yeah. Wait at least like 10 years until you- Well, it's it. tough because they're trying to get work, but I, I, you're right. I mean, that, that's the thing is uh, you're going to be a different comic in a oh, year. Oh, yeah. You're going to be a different comic in six months. So oh, yeah. this lives forever. Look, if you have a little of that stuff out there, that's fine. But sure. I, I'm just saying, putting out a full length special when you're right. brand new, yeah. it's like, you're going to, like, I hate my specials that are like recent. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like you're gonna hate your shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, let's get into it. Let's. Uh, so, you know, in Nashville, it's a different setup, but we're we're doing it off of Jiggy's laptop. So we're gonna watch these clips here together. And uh, who's number one? Our number first. One. Isn't comment. there a big reveal? Ba ba ba. No, it's in envelopes. But yeah, we're doing it. Uh, Ronnie Davis. Hey. Oh, I'll tell you, he's all right. You know, he's all right. <laughs> Good teacher. Really seems to care. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Fucking loved it. Well, great room, but tough group. You yeah. know, the worst. I remember I, I did an audition there, and I did okay. Yeah. And Linda Rowe was like, "You did pretty well, but I don't think you'll do well here." And I was like, "I think you're right." <laughs> <laughs> it was like weird to her. do well, and then <laughs> yeah. and then be like, "Yeah, I don't think I'm right for this room." <laughs> Same. <laughs> talk about bridge and tunnel. That yeah. was crazy. Literally, bridge and tunnel it's by the bridge. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the tunnel. Yeah. But that's where they that's filmed true. all those specials in the '80s, like you know, uh, Seinfeld and uh, you know, Dice Hicks. and Bill Hicks. Carol Leifer special. and like yeah. those are classic. I love those. Yeah, I, I bought those and and I went back and and like Dom Irera for, for example, so like, good. Still holds up. It's fucking. It's a set he could do today. Wow. Robert Fuckers. Schimmel, dude. Schimmel oh, had a great Schimmel's one. Like, yeah. Opens the set by going, "I heard a guy got arrested for animal necrophilia. How do you plead for that? Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I thought the cat was alive while I was fucking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's your opener. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> he was a beast. One of the great, I, I got to open for him a handful of times uh, before he passed. And, and I was, you know, you're just so nervous and I, I, I revered him so much. And then you find he's like the nicest, sweetest guy off stage. Yeah. And that always stuck with me. And he like got me gifts and stuff. Uh, what a nice dude. Yeah. Just wow. a total sweetheart. Bummer. Uh, all right. Let's, let's all watch. Right. Uh, Watch Dangerfield here. Oh, uh, he's oh, so maybe sure maybe my already. maybe holds up better than any comic ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, timeless. <laughs> yep. He opened a folder. Uh, <laughs> a folder open. Yeah, why, yeah. 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 why is there a why is there a kibasa in a high heel shoe? <laughs> <laughs> why does it say sixteen year olds? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. She was afraid of the dog. She saw me naked. Now she's afraid of the light. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs> no, I tell you, actually, I shouldn't tell jokes about my wife. I mean, she's attached to a machine that keeps her alive. The refrigerator. <laughs> uh, my wife, she can't cook either. My house, we pray after we eat. <laughs> I bought a pressure cooker. Now I eat off the ceiling. <laughs> I don't think meatloaf should glow in the dark. <laughs> I mean, she can't cook at all. She made chocolate mousse and antler got stuck in my throat. <laughs> I'll tell you my trouble. I got the wrong doctor. You know my doctor, Dr. Vinnie Boomba. <laughs> I love how they all do. Everywhere yeah. you heard, he wants to kiss and make you feel better, I'll tell you. Every day I wake up, I look in the mirror, I want to throw up. What's wrong with me? He said, I don't know, but your eyesight is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I know I'm ugly. I asked the bartender to make me a zombie. Told me God beat him to it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The king. Man. The king. So quick. Yeah. The, the best. The only down... The, the only downside of Rodney, the one downside is that every 56-year-old guy goes, well, you know, Rodney didn't make it till 51. And you're like, uh, <laughs> uh, he's not you, though. Right. But but that's yeah, what I love the about king. those Tonight Show sets, though, is like... Entertainment was still communal, and when he mentions Dr. Vinny Bumbat, I mean, the place goes nuts because yeah. they know it's coming. Right. Yeah. I, I miss that because now if you do that tonight, it's like nobody, it doesn't matter like it used to then. And yes. everybody knew that the bits that were coming, or just Rodney himself, and yeah. then he goes, sometimes his panel 
killed harder than the actual set. Oh yeah, because oh, he's yeah. just doing the same shit, but now he's talking to Carson. Yeah, right, exactly. it's the same. I mean, he's doing the. He's not. Sh- that's the thing about Rodney's stand-up. It's always the same. Yeah, always. Yeah. The same. I mean, even in <laughs> movies, you're like, he's just, the way he talks. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Hey, you're tall. And, you're you're uh, tall and fat. Well, you're short and ugly. All right, yeah. like it's the same rhythm the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> my thing is like I think sometimes when you see a comic that's just one gear, I wonder like. Would I enjoy that for 60 minutes? Mm. Well, his I, albums are like 40, and he does crowd work in between to mix it up, right? Uh, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah. With crowd work, it would mix, so then I'd be I'd be back on board. Yeah, yeah. The, crowd, the crowd work's definitely got to, because you get to insult live, that's the best stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's, gotta, he's just got to, I'm sure, cannon and stuff. And he's got one gear, but not in a bad way. A lot of comics, you know, they just tell their jokes. If the room's rowdy, right. they just keep telling them. If the room's soft, they just keep telling them. Yeah. They almost need a perfect setup. <laughs> Excuse me, a little semen. But he, uh, <laughs> he, um, I had Chipotle, that sour cream. But he, um, he could still riff and raff and get out of a hole. You yeah, know, yeah. like he could kind of go off script and then drill you with a machine gun. He called it a necklace. And yeah. each one is a pearl. Each joke is a pearl and it would make a full necklace. That was his thing. Yeah. But he was one gear, but he could still. Get out of trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, was, there was a rhythm. I mean, I mean, I remember the movie Meet Wally Sparks, and he's just, you know, he's playing like a Jerry Springer type. Mm-hmm. He's at the governor's ball. The whole thing is like he's trash. Everyone there is high society, which is like that's how you want to see Rodney. Yeah. yeah. And he's walking past this couple, and they're making out. He goes, "You two should go get a room." Then he walks past a fat couple making out. He goes, "You two should go get a warehouse." <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's gold. That's great. One of my favorite stories Tony told me, the old uh, manager owner at Dangerfields, it, I would just drill him. I'd be like, please tell me, tell me stories, tell me any, anything. And he told me at the Caddyshack premiere, um, you know, Chevy Chase pulls up in a limousine and gets out and everybody waves and you know, pictures. And then Bill and Murray pulls up and everybody waves. And, and then uh, this tow truck pulls up with this piece of shit car behind it and Dangerfield gets out. <laughs> and even like at the premiere, he he made a joke out of that. Wow. That's, you know, red carpet, wow. That's, 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 that's great. great. That's great. So brilliant. Yeah. Uh, anybody that, you know, when you tear into people so well, it's so great to see them turn around on the self-deprecation and yeah. do it so well. Yes. Like, you know, the jokes, even though if you look at them and you're like, oh, if you look at them on paper, they're nowhere near as good as when he just delivers them. And yeah. the self-deprecation is be, like probably the best out of anybody. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. And, you know, you see, he's this is what, 70, Eight or something, who knows? Yeah, late yeah. 70s. You see these young Shanling, young Louis Anderson, Leno, Seinfeld. They're good. You can see, like, this guy's going to be great. He's got potential. But against that, you can't touch oh it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a whole nother class. Yeah. The best is. It, it's like me sitting on this panel. Nah. <laughs> uh, you're hey, the richest one. <laughs> if we, hey, money ain't everything, buddy. <laughs> if we do practical jokes in the street, you're going to fucking well, bury us. Crush. You'll I'll bury crush. us, dude. Don't, don't look down. Stand back. <laughs> My favorite. Dangerfield, th- there's one where it says like you know on YouTube like Dangerfield crushes like like Johnny Carson like Johnny Carson is crying yeah and yeah. you see Dangerfield and he, he he looks I don't it's almost like he looks sad mm. like he he's not even enjoying it or maybe he's like thinking about the next joke or whatever but it it was just weird because I'd seen that clip so many times and I was like I wonder if he's enjoying this. Yeah. It's hard though for an audience that big. It's hard. People always say, "Have fun out there." It's work. Like, yeah, 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 well, yeah. how many people right. do you think he was playing to on that show alone? Like, tens of millions, oh, right? God, yeah. Oh yeah. My I mean, favorite line in the set too. He he's like he's like, "Oh, I'm dating this girl. She's so ugly. She's so ugly." I took her to the pier. The fisherman said, "Hey, what bait you use?" <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Wow. That's great. Damn. And he makes it look easy. Like you ever sit down and try to write one of those? It's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's got a thousand of them. Yeah. Um, all right, who who we got number, number two here? Two is uh, Bruce Bruce. Oh, nice a little Bruce Bruce. Any I, thoughts on Bruce Bruce? I just read in Segura's uh, book. He does a story about sitting next to Bruce Bruce in first class yeah. when he got upgraded, and I guess Christina did not. And mm-hmm. uh, just I guess in the in the story, someone went up to Bruce Bruce and was like, "Do you want any candy?" And uh, and he was like, do you know that person? He was like, no. He's like, people just offer you candy. Like, that's his life. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just, people love Bruce Bruce. That's I, I've seen his stuff a little bit, and, and it's yeah. it's very funny, but I, I don't, I'm not as familiar, that's obviously. That's the life I want. I want people to just come and give me candy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to sign up. <laughs> I think he was host on Comic View for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm not as familiar, but but uh, the people at Zanies love him, so I've seen a few clips of his, and he destroy so yeah, yeah he right, let's see uh let's see a little bruce bruce here we close Jiggy. the folder jiggy wow. and then t- <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that wow oh, for a coat what the us 
you do is sit in the aisle. Hey, good doctor, you all right? What's happening, baby? <laughs> Girl, don't you let that big weight fool you. I like me, I need me a good woman. I need me a woman that's down with me. I need a woman that'll help me beat the child support system. <laughs> or show me how, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, I've been paying in the reels for 13 years. What is the rears? That means you behind. Am I lying? <laughs> None of my kids look like me. None of them. My daughter looks just like a mechanic. He used to come by the house. <laughs> <laughs> he always told about something wrong with the car. I go to work. You know what I'm saying? I got three kids. All they triplet. 123, 120, and 119. I got a baby mama. Anybody got a baby mama? My baby mama can lie so good, you be almost convinced. We went to court, the judge said, that's what happened. I said, yeah, I believe that's what happened. <laughs> no, 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 that's what happened. <laughs> I'm confused, my fault, player. I wore that coat out here because I saw somebody come out here dressed alike. Oh my God, what is that? It looks good on you, baby. Don't take it off. It looks good on you. I'm not gonna bother you. She's scared of him. Ooh, he looking at me. People always think when you sit in the front row, he's in the front row, he gonna talk about you. It don't matter. You can sit in the bathroom, I get you. <laughs> see, we got some white people here. Hey, white people, how you doing? Good to see you. I'm not gonna bother you. White people are cool, but I like rednecks. I like rednecks. <laughs> you catch them at the Waffle House, you see them. Go out there and be four, four Ford trucks out there. How you doing? Pretty good. How's that? Pretty good. I'll tell you what, boy, them fucking rappers are just about losing their fucking mind, boy. It's a good redneck. <laughs> the redneck, so like, come on in here, Billy. You know they're in there because they got dogs on the truck barking. <laughs> he ain't going to mess with you unless I tell him. Settle down, dude. That's right, buddy. I wouldn't take nothing for it. I wouldn't drive nothing but a Ford. F O R D, period. I wouldn't drive a Chevrolet because I can't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake. We got it. Yeah. We got it. <laughs> the only thing I'm thinking is how hot, hot is he going to be? In a mink oh my coat? god! Every black comic is like dabbing their forehead with a with a rag. He didn't need a rag. Did. I'm so confused. He's a fur coat. He didn't need a one no not one bead of sweat. No, <laughs> I sweat from my face. Like that's where I sweat. Me I don't too. Get, I don't get pits. I don't get any. I don't get anything. My undercarriage is fine. I just get my face and I hate that about me and I get so jealous when people aren't like look like they have Vaseline all over themselves yeah. when they're performing that's what I look like I say I hate that I could right. never perform in a mink coat uh, no it's and look that good to be honest right. like, yeah, I look great he looks comfortable in it which is like yeah you gotta perform how you're comfortable you yeah. threw a suit on us Mark and I were like what are we doing yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean but you, Same, he's in yeah. a mink coat doesn't give a shit it's very free flowing too it's yeah, like yeah. it's a little like his comedy style and is like very ADD mm -hmm. right. which is, yeah, which is yeah, pretty yeah. funny uh, I love the line about uh, I'll get you if you're in the bathroom. I don't give a yeah. shit. Like that's, yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> I like how he used his joke. body. His redneck was great. He, he became like with the yeah with the, the stand stuff. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I I've seen bits of his where he's just on point and he's in the fifth gear and he's just driving through the joke. But I to your point, I I like that he was. I, I think he was just like. Just that, that to me was like a normal club set where yeah. you're just kind of he's browsing, he's browsing, right. Yeah, right. Like, right. Like, like, who are we gonna get here? Yeah, putting people into it, which is kind of fun. And I bet he turns it on eventually because he's probably setting up and mm -hmm. you know, the slow build. And then I bet he was gonna machine gun it. Yeah, it seemed like the first five minutes of yes. the set. Yeah, that's like pro shit too. When you're like, I'll I'll get it. Just let me mm -hmm. just ease in. He seems like he's easing into something. Yeah, yeah that, that's like a thousand seat venue in that clip or like 1500 somewhere in there and he's just busting on the security guy right, busting right, on that right. person yeah I, I, I think he's probably ramping up towards something but. oh yeah bad choice of clip <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. this could be said is yeah, bad see, choice of clip see, who do we got on uh, number three here well say number two in case you just want to take that whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> I tell. Oh, there, you go. Uh, there we go. Uh, I mean, I, I, I never heard of him. I'm, I'm, sure <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Mark and I know every joke in this oh, clip. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, he's our favorite. I mean, beyond he did 
I saw him at Zany's, you know, he was performing at Zany's. I went down and watched him and he had this line. It was so like, it was so him, but it was fucking great. And he, and the bit was, I called my wife. I got the car. <laughs> like, you got to hear this joke. You got to hear this joke. It was so good because I wanted, I didn't want to forget it. And it was so relevant and in the news and it was just his way. He's like, he's like, yeah, I, you know, I'm dating this girl and I, 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 I wish I could do his cadence, right? right. But he's like, yeah, I was going to fly this girl out to come see the show out of Texas, but her flight got canceled. So I guess we're going to have that baby. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, no. so simple, hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to keep it. Wham. <laughs> 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 He's yeah. Confederate flag joke. Oh, that's one of my favorite. So models. great. He's, so great. He's maybe the best. Like if you could see one comic in a club, like who's yes. not picking a tail? Oh, yeah. who's he, not picking? He's because he's the best off the cuff. His jokes yeah. are perfect. He's he is uh, the most underrated, easily, comic easily working. I, I I don't know why he's not. He should be in arenas. It's probably does he, does he want to be? Yeah, yeah I don't I know if he, he wants it. That. He's a weirdo, and he's got such low self esteem. He's like, I'm an old hack, and you're like, No, you're yeah. what are you crazy? But he really believes it. he's like a supermodel who's gorgeous, who looks in the mirror, and she's like, I'm so fat, this needs to go, and you're like, You're perfect. He is the I, I in my mind, he's like the greatest working comic right now. Easily, yeah. I, Easily. Think, I think Mark and I say this like constantly. I mean, I, the way you called your wife, I can't tell you how many times Mark and I have just texted each other because we're, we're yeah. watching a tell yeah. and I'm like, dude, you need to hear this. I need to tell you this joke. Yeah. I remember we're watching him one night at the cellar and Dave Chappelle just like peeks over Mark's shoulder to, to start watching Dave Attell next yeah. to us. And Mark turns around and he goes, do you like Dave? And Chappelle just goes, yeah, I think he's probably the best. Oh, wow. Like that's such a cool moment yeah, that, that, that Dave Chappelle yeah. It's like, yeah, Dave is the funniest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. But isn't that all art is? This this one grizzled weirdo guy who everybody reveres, but then there's the shiny, cool guy that we all prop up, you know, on TV. Yeah. I think that's kind of how it always goes. There's enough room for everybody in the Korean Rise. But I, I really, I, I just yeah. feel like Dave Attell is the greatest working comic. And even I had friends last night, and they came and hung out. I'm like, you got it. You've got to see this. Yeah. Come down. And they all walked out. They're like, "That was the fucking greatest." Yeah, it's the greatest. He's he's the muddy waters, you know. Like Mick Jagger's <laughs> up there, but then Muddy Waters walks in. He's like, "Oh my God, you're here!" Yeah. You know, he's like that old blues guy down on the swamp that no one knows about. And I still think it's great. He still does the, like the one o'clock spot. Yes. Like at his eight, you think, okay, you, you, you want to do the eight o'clock? At some point, <laughs> nah, 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 I'll nah. scare him. It's too early. It's too early. It's too well lit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember we did a gig once uh, years ago. We're, we're driving back. I was opening for him. He was always really generous. You know, he, he'd bring you on at the end and try to, and I was terrified because yeah. he's Dave Attell. He's the best. Yeah. And, you know, there's just no way to keep up. But he doesn't, if you fail, he saves you. Like he'll say, he'll keep it yeah. on track. Right. He's bored with his act because he's, you know, he's such a great writer he just he's like i just want to challenge myself we're driving back and he's like oh i'm such a hack i'm such a fucking hack and i was like dave we all think you're the best he goes well i'm better than you guys <laughs> <laughs> of course you do he's the best i mean he really he's and, he's a, and he's a great guy on top of that too well, the nicest yeah. even even when i w went to visit him in nashville I, I was going to watch him and it again i i think like it takes a lot you know, at my age, especially with kids and a wife, it's just like to leave my house and drive 20 minutes to go to, a, to go to a comedy club and just watch somebody. Like he's one of the few I would get in my car to watch. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, and we're just catching up. He's like, you should go up. I'm like, Dave, I'm here to watch you, man. I, I really am. I just want to watch you. He's like, hey, go up, go up. And I'm like, there's still a part of me like that is withdrawing myself, even though I'm doing this like over 20 years, like I can't believe David Tell is asking me to do time yeah, on the show. Yeah. And it's it just like, it's still like, even though I'm a comic and like I'm friends with him and I'll, yeah, I'll text him. I'm still like, I there's still that. Of course. Me, that 22 year old that just passed at the cellar. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is crazy. It, hell yeah. And, I, yeah. And, and, and then I watch him and I'm not a comic. Right. I'm just a person yeah. watching a fucking phenomenal comic and I, you know, you know. Sometimes you're watching a comic, and you're like, "I see that. I see what you did there." Or I know. Yeah, of I, course. I, you know, Here it comes. Yeah. I tell it's just like I'm just a person watching. There's some, there's I'm a level when some people like are almost. doing that. Exactly. You feel yeah. like you're paying customers. I'm an audience member. You're like, yeah. where's my second drink? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You yeah. laugh like you're a kid. I, I did a show with him at the Improv in L.A. A few, and it's like weird for us to for either of us to be in L.A., but both of us at the same time. It was yeah. in Netflix as a joke fest, and I just he was closing the show, so I just sat in the crowd and watched, and I was like. 
oh man, you feel like a kid. You're laughing so hard. It's yeah, cra- it's yeah. like you you realize like oh my god, this guy's just giving so many people joy. Yes, <laughs> yes, you know. Yeah, and he's just gifted. I saw him at the cellar not too long ago, and he's like. I know, I know, which is already funny. Yeah. <laughs> goes, I know, I know what you're thinking. I look like I own a GameStop in Syria. <laughs> like, How did you think of that? That's really like he's he's not just a great writer and a funny guy, but he's like with this weird whimsical. Like that yes. Cracker Barrel joke is kind of whimsical and fantastical in a weird way. Yeah, like his mind is filled with like we could have done a whole app on a tell. Yeah, I, know, I mean, yeah. his mind is filled with like you know carnivals and, yes, and little people, yeah. like balloons, <laughs> exactly. and you're like. Exactly. Your mind like is funny, here. You just see that guy, right? It's <laughs> just a Ferris wheel. And yeah, it's just carnival games. It's like a funny Tim Burton. Is yes, yes. yes. That. That's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's watch a tell here. Um... Taco Bell is great. It really is. <laughs> uh, Chalito, that's your favorite? <laughs> we got to thank our... I didn't say let's scream out shit that's open, did I? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't TRL, fuckos, all right? He's still drinking at this point, I think. Oh, yeah. It's like a fat man's request channel. <laughs> uh, Cholitos! <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about drinking here. Let me tell you something. Legally drunk is what? 0.08. Let me tell you what a 1.7 looks like. <laughs> I'm outside of my car blowing my own muffler <laughs> as the cops cheer me on. Yes. <laughs> When's America's Funniest Home Video gonna play that tape? <laughs> What's that? Swallow the cum and tell me what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh. You're not playing with kids here. <laughs> I didn't know this was comedy show slash yell shit out. It is, isn't it? It sure is. You've been here two times already? You are oh, you the guys who came from Madison, Wisconsin. All right, I love to be pointed at a woman, especially when I'm not on trial. That's it, was. That's Toby. God, babysitting these drunks. Yeah. Where is it? You're from Kentucky, where? I think. Don't you two have to be on the Maury Povich show tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> oh my Maury God. Maury Povich says you're my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Wisconsin, that's fucking cold up there. You must just be glad to be out of the house. <laughs> Sitting in a fucking house, snowed in, that radiator hissing at you. In the beginning, he's just hissing. Then the racial slur is spelled. <laughs> <laughs> a new joke. <laughs> oh, we got a new one in. Snowstorm. I was almost killed in a snowstorm. I wasn't driving. I was attacked by a group of albinos. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I couldn't see them coming. <laughs> I thought it was hell. <laughs> I love when he enjoys himself. Yeah. Yes, Because yes. it's so rare you see him, like, generally laugh. Definitely. Oh, God. It, it's a hell gig. It's tough to, like, you never totally. want to see a comic in a hell gig except to tell. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, even then, you want to see him for a crowd that appreciates him. But, like, God damn, just watching him zing people. Yeah. You just see, it's like it's like Yoda in that Star Wars movie where he takes out the lightsaber and you're like, holy shit. Yes. <laughs> there it is. There yes, it is. Exactly. The arsenal of weapons that he, oh, that my he God. just is chucking out. It's fucking great. And I hate to say it, this is going to sound sacrilegious in a way, mm-hmm. but, like, we've watched Bruce Bruce, we watched Rob. Rodney. We're dying at Rodney. This is a different kind of dying. I mean, I yes. was keeling over in the beginning. Yeah. Of the, like, ah, there's something more to Dave. Like, Rodney has great jokes, great timing, great uh, delivery. Dave is just... He just embodies funny. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm, I'm nerding out here, but you know what I mean? There's, no, there's something yeah, more Mark there. Mark and I, like, have bonded... I mean, when we, like, first became friends, we, like, there were comics we bonded over, and Attell was, like, top of the list. He's so funny, and he also... I mean... That joke he did about like I'm blowing the muffler yeah. while the cops cheer me on. <laughs> When's that gonna be on America's Funniest Home Videos? Like it keeps any yeah. other comic would have ended at muffler. It, yes. He yes. kept it going. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And again, it was the AFB line is so like <laughs> out of all the things you could cheer yes. to pick out of the sky, it's like 
fuck, there's so, it's so good. There's some comics that you watch and you're excited to hear what they're going to say next. And I think it tells that. Like, you're just like, he just went and you're like, oh, and you keep going. And then you just did something. Like, when they interrupted him, like, oh, shut up. Like, you got mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The crowd interrupted him. <laughs> of course. Of course. Like, wanted to do it. But, but, there, but there's, he still handled it. Yeah, but there's something about, like, you can't, you're so excited about to watch the words that are about to come out of your mouth. You're on the edge of your seat watching them. Yeah. Right. He's but there's so many gears. Yes. Again. Like, even in that, and, and you're hearing, like, there's, Eight different voices going on. There, I know, right? and, and he drops a new joke in. Yeah, on top of it, right? He's just like, "Oh, I'll put this in here too," right? You know, it's amazing. Crazy. In that hellhole <laughs> of that obstacle course of alcoholics, he yeah. was still dropping stuff. And that's the beauty of stand up is that, like, you know, some nights you're in in SF, some nights you're in Chicago, some nights you're in Kentucky, yeah. some nights you're in West Palm. Yeah. Like, you're everywhere. You ha you're forced to entertain people from all walks of life, and yeah. and Attell is a master of that. Oh my he god. He can connect yeah. to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Just cuz as Mark is saying funny is just funny. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you know, even if you've never been to a comedy club, I cuz you see that all the time at the cellar, right? It's like yeah. oh, this is my first show ever. It's like, do you realize what you just saw? <laughs> yeah. You almost want to say that. To one of my friends last night had never been to the cellar or or seen a tell. And then I I, I I literally I'm like, right? Like like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah something exactly. you're like told you <laughs> and and it's just like right where and like yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I know, I know. I was at the cellar this is years ago and I brought my friend who's he's a comedy nerd, but he doesn't do comedy and I had him on the little seats at the cellar and David Tell walked out. He goes, What are you drinking, sir? And he goes, I'm drinking a cider and Dave goes, Ah, cider, the gateway to pottery. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd laughs and gets a good laugh, but my friend looked at me like <laughs> what, what is that? It's yeah. like another level of comedy. Yeah, and he was blown away. He's it's ne it's like his brain just factors out the hacky line always, and he always yes. has the wittiest line. I remember there was three people come out. You know, in the bathroom at the comedy cellar, you have to walk through the crowd. Yeah. Three people walk out. They all have glasses on, and Dave goes, "What is that? A nerd portal?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, how? I know. How are you that quick? Yeah. He had. He had a, uh, he had like three minutes on butt plugs. Yeah, and he just went. He he, he intros it with as I call it the devil's doorknob. <laughs> was fucking keeled over and crying as the bit's going, and I'm hearing the joke he's doing now about the devil's door, but I'm still laughing about the devil's yeah, doorknob. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, it's, please stop, like stop. I'm gonna die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and oh. he has this weird delivery where you know that he thinks. Everything's a sham. I don't yeah. know. There's something about his delivery where he's, it's so dripping with sarcasm. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, it makes everything funnier. You know, like even just, I know, I know. Yeah. He, that doesn't mean anything, right. but it's so, it's so, I don't know. It's, it's hard to wrap your head around how funny he is just talking, not yeah. even jokes. I think there's certain people like, like this is a complete opposite end of the pendulum here. I'm not putting him at the, but Bobby Lee is somebody that just is. He's got like funny in his bones. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The way he walks, the yeah. way he talks, yells, anything he says is going to be funny because it's him. And uh, yeah, there's very few people. But uh, again, I think to your point, like that uh, tells totally like that. Yeah. Right. Every ounce of him. You, you yeah. know, Will Sylvance. Of course. He's yeah. this black guy with a huge beard. He's kind of shaggy looking. And uh, he kept heckling Dave. And Dave goes, easy, Captain Phillips. <laughs> but just to go easy is, is already funny. You know? So he's got the whole package. It's I'm almost upset. like lyrical. Like the way he speaks, you're like, yeah. it, it, as Mark was saying, it's like a cynical detective or something. Where right. you're like, like you could just picture him like finding a body. Like, she was young, wasn't she? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, right, like, right, like, right, exactly. like, I almost want to see like a cop the... show, but it's it's like Colin Quinn and David Tell. Because yeah. Quinn had that cop show. Yeah, I think Attell right, yeah. was on one. Yeah. But I mean, like, we, when you think of the New York comedy Godfathers, the, the names that pop in are Attell and Colin Quinn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's, those are, like, that's the reason New York has a good comedy scene. A hundred percent. Is because yeah. when, when you have legends like that, it drips down, and you yeah. form a culture, and people see, like, oh, that's how you're supposed to be a comic. Yeah, yeah I, I remember when I first passed, I, I, I was enamored by Jim Norton. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, great, great. I was so like, quick. Great stand-up. I was like, I'll never, I have nothing in common with him. The, anything he's saying, like, who can relate to that? But he is so honest. Yeah. And so, so fucking great. I, 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 he's one of my favorites of all time. I, I love Norton. And I was always, I, I was always like, boy, if I could ever just get to that where I'm that honest with myself yeah. and my comedy, I, I, I'd be so 
proud. It took me so long. Really? Like, but he just had it, right? He just, I don't know, he's got that ability where he's just. He really and, does. And even when you're talking to him off stage, he's, he's so nice, but he's so intelligent. Uh, he really is a brilliant guy. Another one, of the, another one of the quickest wits oh. ever. I mean, incredible on radio as well. But uh, Mark and I were actually just talking about Norton because we we're saying like, it's funny that like those kind of leftist publications don't give Norton the love. He's never like one of those it comments yeah, yeah, for being yeah. honest. And it's like, who is more honest? Like mm. he, what's funny well, is he's talking about shit that like no one's talking about, like being with trans women and yeah. stuff. Yeah, sure. before it was cool, before, by the way. He was doing this like 10 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as if anyone would just do that for the attention. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get a write up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's something, guys. <laughs> but Jim really is just, you're right, he's as authentic as they come. And, and no one ever writes, like, I mean, yeah, he gets write ups. He's a great stand up, but like that side doesn't have like the salon.coms no, the yeah, yeah, yeah. they never give him his flowers and I, and I think he really deserves them beyond I, I completely agree with you and I was at this cellar recently and I watched his set and I knew he was going to talk about his relationship and I'm watching a table of like dudes like bridge and tunnel dudes and I'm like I wonder how this is going to go killing yeah. uh. killing, and that's again to the point of like wow I think he's just putting it so out there and who would who wouldn't think to be inhibited and keep that yeah, to of yourself, right? Of course, the best. But my God, to 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 make those guys laugh as hard as they did, I was like, wow, it's fucking great. For a guy that honest, it would hurt more to keep that in and not talk about it. Mm. I agree with you. Yeah, you know, That's he's a great point. he's that. I mean, I think of like those guys, those tough crowd guys. You know, Colin. Uh, and uh, Patrice, and... Geraldo, Keith Robinson. There, there is an honesty to all of them, and that's oh, yeah. they're so. I mean, I didn't know Patrice, and, and neither did Mark. You know, uh, we, I remember we went to see Geraldo live yeah, at that time. The comics, you know, great show. But uh, there is like an honesty that the way they interacted with each other that you're like, oh my god, that would make my skin crawl. I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I'll tell you when when I first passed there, that was where, like the table was the table, and those guys were holding court every night. And as a young comic, you're you're. I was so like you know appreciative of them and stuff. But then, <laughs> after like years of them just being toxic and shitty to each other, it got to a point where I was like, I I can't be around this anymore. Yeah. So I'd always just sit at the bar. Oh really? And I would just be away from it because it was just nightly and like you know, hey Lego head hair. You know when I walk <laughs> yeah. in, or if, I, if I grew my facial hair, hey AIDS beard, and just like <laughs> right, again, yeah. just you know. There's literally no mix and match you can do without yeah. getting destroyed. Yeah, but it was just like you're getting destroyed nightly, and and looking back on it now, I was like, you're a fucking bitch. You should have just sat there and enjoyed every second of it because there were so many lines you've missed <laughs> yeah. now but, because I was like tired of it. But but we do romanticize that ball busty era, but there are yeah. downsides. It's like Hemingway. You know, you're like, oh, he's out banging uh, these broads and fist fighting, but I'm sure he was crying a lot at home. You <laughs> yeah. know, over. He yeah. did not seem like a happy guy. No, exactly. No, killed himself at what, 61? Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, we do romance. Mark's right. We romanticize the hell out of this shit, and then y there are quality of life decisions you <laughs> yeah. have to make. Yeah, you're like, for sure. Do I need exactly. to be? Do I need to be fully insulted every night? Yeah. <laughs> How bad do I need to feel about myself? <laughs> What's yeah. Yeah. Drunk on the road and go to this house party at four in the morning? Yeah. Do I? I don't know yeah. if I do. But well, sometimes I will like. I'll make toxic life choices just because I'm like, I need a new act. Yeah, <laughs> you got to put yourself, in the, you gotta put yourself yeah. in the scenario. Yeah, <laughs> you got to jump in the pool. Well, the words of Jim Jeffries, no great story ever started with, so I had a salad. <laughs> 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 All right, well, let's get to our last clip. It's one of us, uh -oh. um, and this will be... Uh, Mark yeah. okay. uh, I'm gonna take a hey, quick this makes shit. Sense. <laughs> okay, now you wait outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. and then <laughs> My producer... Um, back in Nashville, George loves, loves both of you guys, loves both of you guys. And- um, I had he, no shot, I had no shot. <laughs> I, had, I had no shot, so, so I'm sure this was a coin flip for him, but we always just do one. Um, so let's watch a clip of you, and I'm sure you're gonna. I wonder, you know, how, I wonder, old I'm, or how current this well, I'm is. I'm wondering, I've seen, I think, all of Mark's late night sets. He's done so many, but I, I'm, I'd say I've definitely seen them all. I I'm hope, yeah, sure. I hope I it's, wonder what we're it's doing. not too old. <laughs> Oh, I hope you look, it, I hope it's you look like you're coding. bracing for a, bracing for a, like a car crash. Well, I don't like seeing me anyway. Let alone even if it's a good clip, I don't like seeing it. So I don't want right, to see how bad out. this let's one see. is. A true comic. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Jeez. Jeez. I remember. Jeez. I've seen the yeah. set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twenty-seven. Wow. Oh, god. 
Does anyone else have that one friend where you go out to a bar to try to meet girls, and like 20 minutes into it, they just go, screw this, let's go to a strip club. <laughs> I don't get that logic. You know, to me, that's like going fishing, not catching anything, and being like, screw this, let's go to the aquarium. <laughs> Same thing, like, I, I'm not a big strip club guy. You know, strippers are just a big tease to me. Like, I look at strippers the same way I look at fire alarms. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh man, I really want to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> the boss! But I know if I do, I'll believe the building. <laughs> That's a great joke. That's a good joke. <laughs> That's a classic. That's a great joke. I, uh, I do like to hit the sauce pretty hard. Uh, quite the booze hound. Uh, I was at a bar the other night, and there were a couple girls at the bar flirting with guys just for the free drink. This is one of my favorite jokes. They weren't going to put out they one of those drinks. Pretty good move. <laughs> Makes you wonder. You think there's ever been any smart kids out there who would flirt with pedophiles just for the candy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Timmy, don't talk to that guy. He's a child molester. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's like a top five Norman joke for me. That, that's like a top five Norman oh joke for me. God. That's one of my all time. My mom will quote that joke sometimes. Really? But yeah, my mom thinks that's a hilarious joke. It's a word that's changed with age. To a kid and to an adult, they be told different things. Like to a kid, creepy's like spooky, like a cemetery is creepy. To an adult, creepy's like a guy on a bus who winks at you while eating a banana. <laughs> <laughs> totally changed. Hey, I mean, Mark, that's, that's fucking... what is that? So that's uh, from what, 2010 or something? Something like that, yeah. I mean, these, these, it's killer. Oh, thanks. To have thanks. a joke 10 years old yeah. and at 27 to have a joke that, I, I wish I had a joke that yeah. good. Oh, that's well, fucking, I mean. That's a killer joke. Thanks. But the fire alarm is. <laughs> fire alarm's great. That's a clean great. TV joke. And the child molester one is just a fucking, oh <laughs> that's, a, that's a classic. <laughs> thanks, thanks. See, this was, but I gotta think. You know, this is so many bombs went into the those. That was what sure. three, four jokes. So many trial and error went into that. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Mm. That, that, that took nine hundred tries. You took to it get over that. the top. The joke's already oh. funny. Like it's already a good joke. But then I know what I'm doing. Right. A, a kid <laughs> acting. <laughs> out, a kid acting like a fucking teen. <laughs> yeah. oh, that yeah. so I the, funny. I got the shit. The kid knows what's up. That, that's oh, do you funny. remember? Do you remember if you had anything else there that? You were trying before until you found that, right? Because I imagine oh, you. Oh, man. Right? I that tried be... everything. Uh, I, I can't remember. Not so fast, ago. mister. Yeah, stuff I like know. that. You yeah. know, like, I got this. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll handle but it. But that's like such something. a good choice. I always find that that's the fun part, too, in the bombing is when there's the moment when you find one that's really funny and you're like, oh, that's it. And then you're like, Hey, you know, mess around, I'll try something else, and you try something else, and that's the one that ends up to being the winner. Yeah, I think that's to have the confidence to throw away a good one to find the great one, I think is awesome. And that's really cool. Well, you already know that. you have the good one, yeah. So yeah it's, it's, a, right? it's a backup. Yeah, <laughs> you say yeah. it after the great one bombs, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> like, yeah, but I'm out. Yeah. What's interesting, too, is I, I during COVID, I, I went back through my old notebooks and just like, oh my god, just bad. And then there was one joke where I was like, I remember trying it and trying it, I, I couldn't do it, and it, I was so much younger, and it. I was like, now I'm at an age or at a point where I can make that work. Yes, you know what I mean? of course, of course, yeah. Where it's like, I didn't have the skill right. set younger to pull that off, mm -hmm. but now I know how to weave that and make that actually work. And I was just going through like, uh, kind of fascinated by that. We also think like of, me, but like, <laughs> what was younger me thinking? <laughs> like, what were oh I thinking about writing in these books? Yeah. Yeah, I saw a clip today. I'm not gonna say who it is, but it's some young guy. Everybody's posting clips now. Yeah. Like a, a week in, they post a clip. And I get it, it's exciting, but the joke didn't really land, but there was something there, and I remember thinking, this is a good, really good idea, but the audience just has no idea, right. there's, a, there's a step missing. And once they figure that out, that joke's gonna murder. Wow, and that's just yeah. part of being new, but they everybody just posts it all. But soon. people are just yeah. like it's all about getting that work, and it's it's funny. It's like almost not really about specials anymore. I guess when you put a special out, it's something everyone will post for yeah, you, so sure. it's, you get that bump. But you really get more fans by just posting. 60 second clips now it's, it's crazy yeah it's kind of sad how it's all changed like <clears throat> i think netflix kind of ruined the special if i'm completely honest i mean 52 specials in 52 weeks it's like yeah, what are you insanity. doing why would you do that well, there's a lot of there's oversaturation everywhere like think about how many comics there are like youtube is oversaturated too it's sure, yeah. it's, it's yeah. everything but at least youtube is like 
anyone can access that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you think it's just that the process has changed though too though? Like the process has really changed. Like we talked about the gatekeepers earlier. You know, the process has changed where the power's in the people's hand and people could decide who they want to be fans of. So yeah. the fan bases, I feel get, for good, I'm talking about like there is a lot of shit, right? But then there's a layer of good that has potential to go and you get to actually see people become better. Which yeah. I think is it, the only place you would be able to see that is if you physically lived in New York, Chicago, whatever, and yeah. you were able to go to a comedy club and watch a young True. comic, you know? So now there is an excitement to seeing people. Like, I've, I follow a couple on TikTok that uh, that I liked, and then now I see them a couple of years later, and I'm like, they're actually getting better. And you get, like, a little bit of a, ah. get to see their journey, sure, which I don't yeah. think you were able to see earlier, yeah. which is nice. But the trade-off is there's a lot of shit, and you have to f find them. Yeah, you got to so sift. That, that, that's that's, that's a, a good point thing. about finding people is that, you know, everyone used to say there was an advantage to starting as like a big fish in a small pond and then you move to new york and people are like who the hell is this guy yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that doesn't really happen anymore no, right because yeah. yeah. you kind of have seen not everyone but i mean right so I, people who are doing it you've accessed them you have been able to see them through one of the you know different platforms oh yeah yeah, yeah. well I, I do want to say i know i i appreciate you guys being here and i want to say this as we close i have so much respect for you guys because when i moved and you're withdrawn from the new york scene and you go back and you keep up with everything kind of like online. I was really so, I, I love the fact that you guys took matters in your own hands, put out your own content, put production value into it as well. And then to see the support system within this city of yep. all the great comics pushing and supporting one another to help drive up those YouTube numbers and everything. I was like, fuck, that's how it's done. It was so cool to see how supportive <laughs> the community was. Uh, with all the work in comics, and I, I really, really just respect and revere what you guys have uh, done. And not only you, the man. act, but like the business side of it, taking it in your own hands and not waiting for the gatekeepers to, well, to acknowledge you. Thank you. That's very nice. Coming from a guy who we all respect, you know, I used to watch you. I saw you in LA with my parents at that wow. one show in the theater with Dan Levy, and it was hosted by that hot model lady. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It yeah. was a weird show, but you yeah. had the set of the night easily. Oh, you, well, did the, you. you did the uh, that doggy style bit with the, the hands get tired. <laughs> Kill. <laughs> Kill. That's yeah. a great prep. But my point is... Shit, I forgot my point. <laughs> I'll tell you about you doing that act out. But uh... well, I'll tell you when I did that act out uh, for my Comedy Central presents. You know, it, like when you're young, it's like these are the bits you got. Now, yeah, of course, I, I, of I, course. I look back on that and I cringe. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. I was doing it and I'm banging my head on the fucking stage, and I'm looking at my mom and she's dying laughing. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> my mom's relating to this. Ooh. Oh, no. yeah. I've connected with my mother finally. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you guys so much. Oh, yeah, thank you, you so much, time. man. It's a lot you. of fun. This is a check out your podcast. We, we might, might be, be drunk. drunk. We got to go film it. Yeah, uh, we might be drunk uh, wherever you get podcasts, man. Mm -hmm. And we By got way, and we got so a cool special to see with Letterman. That was fucking, that was fun as hell. I mean, you must be you must have been over the moon going in. Yeah, there, he's right? the best. I mean, he's ins it's insane. It's it's Unreal. he's one of the best ever. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. saw it live and. They both killed. You guys were both zinging and zanging. It was, it was great crazy. to watch. It was cool. Like there were some people doing the show that had like twenty friends. I literally had Mark. I only had Mark. <laughs> My agent came for the other show. Like, yeah. I had someone at all times. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there all were you need is Mark, though. For oh, gonna be all, honest. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's like the perfect that when you just have your like one friend. You're like, this is That's this it. is perfect. Yeah. All you need. Well, thank you guys so much again for your time today. I really appreciate it. And Joey, of course, as always, thank you. Love you. Bro. Comedy pinata. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Yeah. That was fun.